Welcome to another video of time value of money. In this video, we will look at the concept of multi-period compounding. Most of the discussions in the videos for time value of money assume that cash flows occur once a year. This is called annual compounding because at the end of every year, the interest is getting compounded. However, in practice, cash flows could occur more than once a year. For example, banks pay interest semi-annually. Home loans, student loans and auto loans require monthly payments, etc. The banks, brokers and other financial institutions quote the interest rate on an annual basis and is known as nominal interest rate or annual percentage rate. So nominal interest rate or annual percentage rate APR. So what is nominal interest rate or annual percentage rate? Suppose you invest 100 rupees in a bank with interest rate being 10% a year and that the bank will compound semi-annually. So deposit amount is 100 rupees. Interest rate is 10% per annum and compounding is semi-annual. So this 10% per annum, this is the nominal interest rate. Let's call this nominal rate as number one. Now let's move on to period and periodic rate. So let's first understand what is meant by period. I'll take a different example here than what I had taken in number one, just so we understand this clearly. So let's say the total time frame given to us is two years and the compounding is happening on a monthly basis. So monthly compounding. So in this case, there will be two multiplied by 12 equal to 24 periods in consideration. So basically this is number of years and this is periods per year. So we can say that number of periods is equal to number of years multiplied by periods per year. Now in our example number one, if this deposit is being done for one year, then the number of periods is equal to, so this is one year and since the compounding is happening semi-annually, so in one year there are two periods, so one into two, so two periods. So we understood the concept of period, now let's move to periodic rate. Now as discussed earlier, 
द रेट चार्ज बाय अ लेंडर और पेड बाय अ बोरोवर पर पीरियड इज नोन एज पीरियोडिक रेट इट कैन बी रेट पर ईयर पर सिक्स मंथ्स पर क्वार्टर पर मंथ एक्सेट्रा सो द पीरियोडिक रेट कैन बी डिफाइंड एज नॉमिनल इंटरेस्ट रेट और ए पी आर डिवाइडेड बाय नंबर ऑफ कंपाउंडिंग पीरियड्स पर ईयर सो इन आर एग्जाम्पल हेयर द पीरियोडिक रेट इज इक्वल टू द नॉमिनल इंटरेस्ट रेट विच इज टेन डिवाइड बाय द नंबर ऑफ कंपाउंडिंग पीरियड्स पर ईयर which is 2 so this is 5% so we have seen the nominal interest rate we have seen the periodic rate now let's move to the third type of rate which is the effective annual rate or effective interest rate so in our example since the compounding is happening every 6 months the bank will first calculate interest on your deposit of rupees 100 for the first 6 months at 5% per period and add this interest to your principal now on this total amount accumulated at the end of the first 6 months you will again receive interest for the next 6 months at 5% per period so for the first 6 months interest is equal to 5% of 100 which is 5 divided by 100 into 100 equals to 5 rupees now the principal at the end of 6 months becomes Hundred plus five equals to hundred and five rupees. So now for the next six months, you'll earn interest on this hundred and five rupees. So interest equals to five percent of hundred and five. So five divided by hundred into hundred and five, and this will come out to. 5.25 rupees so at the end of one year the total accumulation of interest will be equal to 5 which is this amount plus 5.25 which is this amount which is equal to 10.25 rupees however if interest were compounded annually you would have received interest equal to 10% of 100 which is equal to 10 divided by 100 into 100 equals to 10 rupees this is when compounded annually so the total amount at the end of one year would have been 100 plus 10 which is 110 rupees so basically you received more interest overall under semi annual compounding because you earned interest on the interest earned during the first 6 months and you will get still higher amount if the compounding is done quarterly or monthly so in this example 10% is the nominal interest rate while 10.25% is the effective interest rate so nominal is 10% while effective 
interest rate is 10.25%. Now a point to be noted is that if the compounding period was annual and if the annual interest rate was 10.25%, then the interest amount would be 10.25 rupees. So if we know the nominal interest rate and the number of compounding periods per year, then we can find out the effective interest rate by using the formula 1 plus i to the power n minus 1 